dangled from the tiny body you barely knew would ever come at all and pressed into a mucky adult clay you know will come every day at the flick of your switch whenever you command it. This is exactly the condition I used to avoid, which I thought was impossible as poetry or as anything that is the meaning I am desperate for, yet now it is the only one that I make work hard. Five. Whatever manoeuvres in repression we fund in the short term will prove invaluable in the event of actual revolution. After the menacing from Blair Gibbs, the head of crime and justice at the policy exchange, who said in response to the disclosure that police overtime payments went up by 29% between 2002 and 2006, that overtime payments for the police have, quote, spiralled out of control, we can suggest that the case for overtime for the police is implicit in the need to be prepared in case the revolution should come at night. The clearance of this square is a practical demonstration of the inadvisability of imposing restrictions on police overtime payments. Six, a modest spike in public fear would begin to compensate Rupert Murdoch for the embarrassment we caused him right at the very sensitive moment when he and British Culture Minister Jeremy Hunt were trying to consolidate his control of the British media, when it was revealed in the press that we had hushed up the phone hacking under Andy Coulson at the News of the World. A good stimulus to petty bourgeois paranoia is always best delivered at the 11th hour, albeit at some inconvenience to the editorial staff, because the stimulus is naturally more potent the more convincingly the hooligans can be shown to have taken things too far and gone on too long, and in the case of a painstakingly slow containment operation still in progress when the news coverage ends for the night, they will have no choice but unarguably to have done just that. This is another natural basis for ring-fencing police overtime payments. Seven, it will be an exquisite additional goad to Gaddafi and Mubarak to make them watch the police of their enemy doing with geometrical impunity what the police of Benghazi and Cairo weren't allowed to do. In some small measure, it will help convince the Chinese that the pressure we exert on them in public over human rights really is just for the purposes of domestic political propaganda back home, which may yet lead to a thawing of relations between Vodafone and China Mobile. It sets a good example to the Irish whose need for Spartan repressions in fulfilment of the terms of the massive loan we the British obliged them to accept from us could surely be made the basis for a new international market and police consultancy right there on the ground in a bona fide tax haven. Eight, given the currently high profile of the Yvonne Fletcher murder and in view of their being asked to dismantle a strategic analogy with what may as well be the Middle East as a whole, it may be possible for the clearance team of cops to hallucinate that they are avenging the core by truncheoning the Libyans. Whether the team really does have that hallucination or not is arguably immaterial, since for our part it need not be true, in order that we may enjoy the irony of imagining that of course it is, or laughing benevolently at the thought that the team might really be wrestling with spectral Libyans. The hooligans, meanwhile, can be allowed to achieve one part of their program, namely that they turn into spectral Libyans when you remind them of the repressibility of their jouissance. These meanings are not yet all equivalent. Some do that better than others. If you stop and think about it, it might contribute to the pacification of the fascist English Defence League, who can be expected to get a real kick out of seeing a bunch of pampered socialist Islamophiles compressed into a cameo of the herd, which they obstinately refuse to acknowledge exists and does run politics, which may mean less budgetary nightmares for management colleagues in Luton. The meanings are not less articulated for ending up unnumbered. After all, accumulation is about finally not remembering what meaning you are on, or not caring. But not caring turns out to be a treacherous attitude, best done on the sly. Because all your care is radiant, know your fucking enemy. I'm now going to read uh, TL, O to TL 61P. Five. TL61P, in case anybody uh, both doesn't know and would like to know, which is assuming a lot, is um, the product ordering code for a now um, obsolete hot point tumble dryer uh, door hinge replacement mechanism, um, which one night, which night was it? One night, uh, I conceived I ought to uh, make the recipient of this uh, sequence of suite of five odes. Um, and I suppose ode five begins by wrestling with that choice a little. This is the last poem that I read and it's the longest one and it will take us to the end. So here goes. Ode to TL61P5. 
I stupidly broke the catch. I slammed the door shut and the catch encased in the door is now broken. The catch inside the rim is fine and if I lodge a spoon in there it continues to function but obviously then the door isn't closed. I'm having a nightmare finding a replacement door. I have managed to take the door off but I can't seem to get the door apart to remove the catch itself. A liquid sieve was slicked on, mock extinct. The grating is a waste grown empty, ground up in the missing cogs. The ultimate multifacets grow facetiously immortal for who knows well it isn't. She wants more than that and so should you. Please as if gradually read all the notes on your coding notice. It's good to know the worst. It's good to know it's only that. Perturbation theory leads to an expression for the desired solution in terms of a formal power series in some small parameter that quantifies the deviation from the exactly solvable problem. Love can be trusted not to fade as also faded out to trust. Devour the wind that just washes over you. Its meaning is its filling. Your reflection in glass blown into the shape of your face to accommodate its progressive jutting. Cracks appear in your shambolic argumentative scream learnt fresh from orgasming. A rondo to oblivion, d'execution transcendante. Excess levity leads to an unblessed strain injury for the dozen or so marketing executive secretly pretending to get really good at free improvisation. They're out back. Whatever the fuck that thought is, get it back. Commissioning variations on your theme. The screen blinks. Yemen for cubist. Get it back. Mortality is scrambled to the precy of our meaning to make life comprehensively succinct. The immutable is better than the mutable. The inviolable is better than the viable. And the incorruptible is better than the corruptible. Look at teeth or Africa or whales. Look at yourself. You don't need to be Dante. I go onto the mound. It is snowing a bit. The fence at the corner is obscurely associated with being loved and doing the creosoting for a meagre sum, which I think is, is a lot, but is also a way of rounding into the street with your feeling of disappointment. Twigs scratch and knock on it, later redone in local colour. People are dragging back the sled. On the top, the snow is packed onto the muddy grass, oddly hard by all those feet. That is the efficiency of feet. People go down the mound. In the summer, when the snow was gone under the mud, I went there with David and ended up agreeing to be the one who was fucked, so long as I did not have to be the one who would fuck back. And I put myself on my hands and knees with my pants down in front of him, facing away. I felt myself become a hole. I now think I emerged as a hole for him. I now emerge as a hole for you. We didn't get to do it. Our mothers came looking for us and stopped it even before fear did. But I suspected even then that he was frightened or just indifferently disgusted since otherwise surely he would have done it to me quicker since I think so. But I mean that him fucking me would have come first but not me fucking him or our mothers. We should have made our mothers come too late. I heard that he told people about it and I was angry because I was ashamed at having again capitulated to secrecy. Secrecy was my enemy, like God engrossed in someone else. The caravan in his garden, in the caravan in his garden, I tried pressing him to agree to one last fuck without touching with his father figure, who was a man I now give a cartoon nose, white skin, a beard, and idly established was 40. I'm colouring in his hair, it's brown. It wasn't love, but it hurt and left me complex. I am a real hole for you, not a barely noticeable flimsy crack. David had a stupid way of laughing and a fucking ugly blush. Hastened defections. I swapped stickers with him and went on to exchange my motorbike for Christian's tank, an agreement which my father unhappily retorted was a sort of extortion from infancy, but which made me sexually delight in having given away more than I had got back, for the delight was secret. I made my sister wear the fantasy lieutenant shirt with the felt tip arrows pinned to the collar to propitiate invasion, nylon for insignia. I lay under a cushion and asked her to jump on my head. She did. I like Roxette. I like Elite and cocoa butter on carrots. The 10th of November 2010. The police smack the people in Merrion Row, doing their jobs justice. At Millbank, the windows are booted down, voiding reinforcement. The government boys look set to make our solvency heroic. Their genitals in plaster deck the halls like power drills. You walk from the Strand to Nelson, left at the corner into Whitehall. The police are instructed to ingratiate camera persons by ignoring them. The technique is borrowed right from the top. Tolerance of poverty is its paradigm. You film them and they film you. Synergy by right. 
Because the universe has been outmaneuvered, individuals flourish. To put away your childish things, cut the arts first. Say in the prophylactic tone of establishment sarcasm, what chance for debt reduction against the sheer nobility of sentiment? If there will be a revolution in the UK, it will require the army. War will continue either way, sugared by truth or not. Love is not the unswerving professional bias of police dogs. It has to be made from scratch at the first indication of its possibility. The French have their avantage acquis, as we in turn have ours. A peine rentre les lampions, voilà que tourne les bons. If we don't fight now, the super rich will harden into sultans. Deeply and truly, fuck them, one way receptacles. At the corner of Parliament Square, the teenagers are standing on bus shelters. They are shouting for what they believe and feeling what you never will. Think of the anger you waste on gifts that might be used on money. Masturbation is not love, it's betrayal of the workers. You can see the predisposition to moderate success in politics, in the features of Aaron Porter, his flexible physiognomy. The thought of sex with him doesn't occur to the majority of his union delegates. That's what makes him perfect for redefining compromise. The wall of glass smashed in looks like what Wordsworth saw in the flint windbreaker lying on the empty floor to be a shard of broken glass.